derived and uh, they're <coughs> connected with the uh, non-physical parameters. One is the static cosmic lattice pressure. And it is important because it is like a pressure uh, defining uh, the pressure on the uh, internal structure of the elementary particles that is impenetrable to this uh, cosmic lattice and define the Newton's mass. So, in fact, the, the mass that participates in all equations is not something constant. It appears as a pressure of the, this cosmic lattice. Then the notion is that if some parameters of the physical vacuum, I called cosmic lattice, are modulated, then you could change the mass of the object. And from here, uh, it is predicted one gravito-inertial mass effect. And uh, it is based on this that uh, this cosmic lattice nodes, they have the same frequency and easy and easy synchronized. And in fact, all the time they are synchronized with one parameter, um, Compton length, that is involved in definition the velocity of light. Here, we don't have to take just velocity of light like a postulate, but we see why it is constant and what parameters define the light velocity. And this self-synchronization is almost persistent, but uh, <coughs> there is a conclusion that uh, if you disturb the self-synchronization of this cosmic lattice knot around the solid object, this should affect the gravitational and inertial mass with simultaneous disturbance of the light and electromagnetic waves in the surrounding zone. So, in fact, we have here the uh, Newtonian equation, but we have change of the force by the change of the mass. And the theory of a uh, symmetrical disturbance of the uh, self-synchronization uh, is by using the unveils electrons properties. Because to make such disturbance, we have to reach one super high frequency, that is a Compton frequency, 1.236, 10 power of 20. How to reach this? In fact, it could be reached with much lower frequency by using electrons that have the same frequency, but properly motion of this electron accelerating by a uh, much lower acceptable alternative frequency, what could reach this frequency, what can modulate the, the cosmic lattice, the physical lab vacuum. For this reason, was investigated electromagnetic plasma, then it was identified the technology and the, uh, the envision methods should work uh, at normal pressure and in vacuum if there is a proper gas surrounding. Here are some laboratory experiments are shown. Here the, the force field actuator, and uh, here also one demonstration of the predicted effect. The, in the last conference of the uh, uh, society annual meeting, in fact, I show a demonstration of rotating based on properly activated plasma actuators. And uh, now I have another uh, effect, that, uh, another demonstration. I enclosed all the activator in the volume of cylinder. Activating this uh, actuator, the whole cylinder moves. In fact, this contradicts to the Newton's law of motion because if you in one wagon and try to, uh, uh, to push inside the wagon to move, it's no, it doesn't. But in this case, it moves. So the only explanation is that the gravitational mass of this object, actuator, is affected, and it is affected also unidirectionally by properly activated surrounding plasma of the object. And here, if, you, if we investigate a lot of this phenomena, the effects about UFO, we found so much similarity that is 
predicted by this physical effect. The conclusions are that the predicted gravity inertial effect, I call stimulated anomalous reaction to gravity, relies on a physical principle not envisioned from the classical and modern physics. Uh, the Sark effect is a change of the physical vacuum parameters which define the gravity inertial mass. The propulsion could be used uh, in the atmospheric and in deep space environment. Also, the effects in this uh, that match the effects of the observed phenomena are quite understandable and explainable from this point of view. But uh, the conclusion is that the, this effect is suitable only for interplanetary and deep space travel, but not for replacing the jet propulsion system in the Earth's atmosphere. Why? Because this modulation of space may, uh, may have some unwanted effects that uh, some case could be dangerous. For example, there is one unwanted effect, Hutchison effect, that I apparently also received in my uh, experiments, as a result of which uh, for example, in one of my experiments, this uh, rod that I use as an inductor apparently get uh, uh, sparks, unwanted sparks, and this rod was uh, curved just for the two seconds. It's a you could not curve this rod for 5,000 degrees heating by hours. And it is curved without any crack. So this effect, in fact, is something changing something of the space environment, of the physical vacuum. And uh, one of the f major reasons is this, just to to make a test of the speed of light. Repeat this experiment that Stefan Marinov repeat, and see that something ex exists in the space. Thank you. Now we have time for five minutes of questions. All right, let's start on this side of the room. Questions? Okay, we'll start with York on that side. Uh, I am indebted to Tom Van Flandern for pointing out some months ago that the, uh, the existence of the global positioning satellite system and the fact that people can actually uh, succeed in navigating with it consists of an empirical demonstration that the speed of light is, in fact, constant and isotropic in the environment of Earth and is an observation with, with now billions of instances and thousands more accumulating every day. Therefore, uh, this would seem to be an overwhelming body of evidence that anything, any experiment that has claimed to find a uh, velocity relative to the medium of electron dynamic of electromagnetic propagation is simply wrong. Okay. If you make uh, measurements of the velocity of, of light without a uh, source that is not interrupted, not in sequences, uh, the Doppler shift com is compensated by the clock rate change from the special relativity. So this effect is not observable. But if you make a measurement by intercepting a flight in two directions and both shot at work simultaneously, as the experiment of the Stefan Marinov, and not only his, but there is another experiment that clearly detects the motion of the, our solar system through the Milky Way. And it is detected in the, lab, in the laboratory. And this experiment, uh, uh, in the peer review journals. Um, I, unfortunately, I can't tell enough from just this presentation to, to really understand your phenomena. Is there something simple that I could do in my laboratory to test this theory? Uh, uh, in fact, uh, 
this phenomena 